Why? Hello and welcome everybody. So today I wanted to go ahead and update you guys with the part two of the Righteous Fire changes for 3.19. Now before I start this, do not forget, uh, if you have not watched the previous video on part one, I would highly recommend you go check that out because I'm not going to loop the same information. So TLDR, we had the manifesto about a week ago where I covered the changes there, which was pretty much literally all nerfs. Here, we don't really have much nerfs anymore, more so just like overall changes. This is not necessarily affecting Righteous Fire, but since I said I was going to make a part two video, I figured I may as well commit to it. Uh, so we're basically going to be talking about things that affect Righteous Fire or maybe how you progress and play it, or maybe, you know, some different avenues we get to explore. And then I'm going to show you guys a little teaser of the POB I'm working on for you guys for 3.19. So let's get started. Uh, step one, we're going to talk about the unique balance. So, uh, Kikizuru rings now give three life per second from one. Uh, this means that you can expect to be running Righteous Fire, you know, prior to... Well, hold on. Before I start this, there's a number of life regen buffs. So, basically, for people who don't want to League Star Righteous Fire and prefer to do it as, like, a second character, you can absolutely expect to get Righteous Fire running at, like, level 20, 25 relatively easy now compared to, you know, the annoyance of having to do it with like abyssal jewel stacking with a stygian vice you don't have to worry about that anymore getting it set up for secondary characters should be much easier uh moving on to an insane buff actually of all these uniques this is the one i think that i draw the most attention to immortal flesh can now roll a top end of 350 life per second this ends up, you know, on Inquisitor, if you happen to have a 350, that's 700 because 350 life is also 350 ES. It's not like it's a belt that you're probably going to use way into late game. I mean, it's still really good, but compared to like a Stygian Vice with a tier one life roll that's Catalyst with a life, like, an, like a percent life roll with life recovery. I mean, you know, there's a lot of crazy stuff you could get, but for people who just want to like throw on uniques, I think this is huge. Uh, another thing is Immortal Flesh reduces your Ellie res. And if you guys have played my build, we have an abundance of Ellie res in the early stages. So it's not too big of a deal. Rise of the Phoenix lost its flat life, but to compensate, uh, they gave it way more armor and energy shield. The energy shield it gets kind of offsets the life you lose. It's not a big deal. And it also gives 100 to 200 life per second, which is huge. Only problem with Rise of the Phoenix is I still don't consider it like an end game shield but it's definitely much stronger than it was before. The other thing I don't like about it is it's a shield that offers no recovery. And I know I'm comparing it to something like an Aegis Aurora, which is not fair, but you know, this is why I don't like to use Rise of the Phoenix at Endgame. Uh, another thing about it is I still might prefer On's Heritage because it gives like a hundred life, gives like a thousand plus armor and gives two max res of all res. So I don't know if I want Rise of the Phoenix over an Ons, but that's something to think of. For people who just want raw regeneration, Rise of the Phoenix is very strong. Uh, Saffle's Frame got a big buff to spell damage, uh, along with, uh, sorry, spell block, along with extra all res. Saffle's is also a very solid option. Um, Shaper Seed for like leveling players, uh, it now gives 4% life per second. Uh, so that's kind of cool. Springleaf, uh, pretty sick actually. The really low level shield no longer has 3% life per second or 3% life on low life. Now it's just straight up 30 to 50 life per second and 100 life per second while on low life. That's kind of ridiculous. That by itself almost enables Righteous Fire because that's crazy. That's actually so nutty. Um, Vol's Vision now grants 400 life per second if no equipped items are corrupt. This one is really unique because there's no variance. It's literally 400 life per second, right? All you have to do is not have corrupted gear. This is something that could very well be extremely beneficial until you get your Elder Helm, for example. Uh, Malachi's Vision is a 400 ES Helm. Not really something we would use, but just kind of, you know, unique. It's the counterpart to it. Uh, all of your items have to be corrupted. Death's Rush got changed. Death's Rush, um, now, instead of it granting, you know, the armor, the life, and the chaos res, and the onslaught, it now grants adrenaline, which is a buff in my opinion, 100% increased damage, a better onslaught with physical damage reduction. The only thing about this is you cannot refresh adrenaline, you have to actually let it fall off, and then kill again. 
but when you're mapping that happens instantaneously and now you can still get onslaught with this so i think death's rush is crazy i don't know if it's something i want to get right away into maps i feel like it's going to be something i want to incorporate later into like higher tier maps but i think 100 percent increased damage for mapping is nuts so this is so crazy in my opinion all right exalt and divine orbs if you guys did not hear they uh, there's a big patch here so divine orbs and exalt orbs actually have the same drop rate but exalted orbs are worth so much more in trade we are making changes that will impact this firstly we are changing the cost of crafting meta mods so they cost divine orbs rather than exalt so if you remember things like cannot roll attack mods multi-modding things like that those are now divines instead of exalts six link vendor recipe now grants 20 fuses um so this is very interesting uh this is just a change that i felt was important for me to highlight because one of my scepter methods for crafting prior to recombinators was multi-modding so now that would be multi-modding with divines but i don't know how this is going to affect us yet but i think it's important to take note of it so we're aware of it uh atlas changes we've had uh, our maps reshuffled uh essentially maps that have been added back we have uh some really cool ones where was it uh i think pier is maybe okay i like race course i like plateau and i like silo so i'm very happy about that some people like vault too vault's not too bad oops a daisy okay uh moving in a little further Irak mods available uh the reason i brought up this one is solely for the fact that essence is worth 2c and essence crafting is going to be for us this league so that's pretty nice i like that a lot uh, another one biggest one yet yeah, um, I hope this is going to be fantastic for content creating because Harvest has been reworked. Harvest monsters are no longer associated with specific crafting options and do not grant uses of crafting options on death. Instead, monsters defeated now drop stacks of life force. So basically, you see the Harvest, you click which one you want, the mobs drop life force, it gets, you know, you click it, and it's like in your inventory or in its own whatever it is that it goes to, and it's tradable, that stacks in huge amounts, and then you get to do all of your crafting back at your hideout. So basically, you could map, find a harvest, still have your brain turned off, pick one of two, kill it, 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 go back to mapping, you're done. Right? Like, you get to now craft on your own time at your own hideout with, like, fixed rates. So hopefully, this will streamline entry-level crafting a lot for newer players who are trying to use harvest versus, like, opening a map, going into a harvest, and seeing, like, you know reforge fizz reforge fire reforge chaos you know add or remove this swap this to that res swap here upgrade uh you know whatever so like i don't know i'm really curious to see how this works specifically so harvest i'm very excited for added a new dexterity skill gem alchemist mark curses a single enemy granting flash charges when you hit them and create a burning ground under them if your hit ignites uh very curious of how this works. I don't think it will replace flammability, but I think it is worth investigating, kind of like how we investigated Fire Trap a long time ago, and Fire Trap ended up being our new single target. It may very well be um, a reason to like push more for plus one max curse if it can beat like Ellie Weakness for bossing. Okay, next up are kind of some funny changes that I noticed. Um, or I guess not funny, but this is pretty cool. The map device now remembers which map crafting option you last used. So that's pretty cool. Um, fix the bug where the uh, maximum more physical damage uh, taken value for enemies within your pride was not affected by aura effect. I feel like that's really big. So that's really good that, that that's kind of like a melee buff, right? Without them actually saying they buffed it. Uh, fix the bug where overkill burning damage from Herald of Ash was not affected by modifiers to damage over time. Technically, that's a buff to our Explode RF. And fix the bug we're taking self-damage from Bone Shatter would always critically strike if hits against you had additional critical strike chance. So, <laughs> you know, that kind of sucks too. So that's good that that's fixed. Anyway, that's pretty much all I got there. So what I want to do now is show you guys the new POB I'm working on. So as you guys know, right, we had the older POB which is here that I'm sure you guys are, you know, well aware of, right? How it works. Uh, so I want to show you guys the new POB I'm working on. So over here in the 3.19 RF, uh, it's got the same exact layout where basically if you, if you look here, 
Well, for some reason, oh, there we go. I don't know why it wasn't yellow there. But if you look here, it's pretty much kind of very similar uh, with the leveling here, kind of how I did it, right? Uh, furthermore, under the skills, uh, there's a new grouping, or at least I'm using a new, a new way to um, organize this, where everything is now going to be organized in this little skill set section. So for example, level 1 through 12, you can see everything that you need. So under your damage skills, you can see rolling magma, flame surge, flame wall. That's right, not using winter tide. I've tested. This is pretty cool stuff. Uh, so yeah, going a little bit further, you can see 12 to 28. Uh, going across 28 to 55, uh, 55 through 70. I've put a little bit extra colored text to make sure players are aware of what is going on. So for example, this here is explaining that uh, for the current aura setup, you want to get a uh, Conqueror's Efficiency, which you can find in Act 8 from the quest, The Wings of this Theory. Uh, and then if you look over here, if we were to, so this is in the 55 to 70, right? If we bring this here to the 55 to 70, you'll notice here, here is the uh, Conqueror's Efficiency. With, the, with how cool the grouping thing here works, you can see that the aura effect is directly tied with it. No longer do you have to like go in here and uncheck this and check this. You can now just literally switch the tab and switch your skill tree and your aura effect and mono, like your mana reservation will kind of match this. So hopefully it'll be much easier for players. So for example, over here, I have a swapping auras for more damage, right? That is what? That is like right there and you can kind of see how the way everything is going don't worry about the like red numbers here this is not really polished yet um i'm still kind of working on this i still have to uh i still have to set up the uh actually this here i haven't done the um oh no no no. this is good i haven't done the aga swap yet this is not created uh and then same thing with the items here right 1 through 12 12 through 28 28 through 55 25 through 70 and 70 through 90. um i've also um color coded these and the reasoning for the color code is you can actually see the gear based off of the level by color so uh, oftentimes what happened was a lot of players accidentally were clicking random things in the pob and hitting save and then they would say that i made an error and you know it doesn't matter to me whether or not there's an error i can just fix it but it was kind of messing up the way they progress because they accidentally misclicked something this should be a lot easier to see because you can kind of be like oh i have a, a teal piece of equipment on in my level 1 to 12 that's not right uh, not that anyone has to do that, but, you know, just trying to make things a little bit more clear uh, for the newer players progressing. Anyway, that's pretty much about it. So I hope you guys had a wonderful time. I hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Hopefully this will be done in the next one to two days. Then we can get that live and then we can work on the website and then we can work on the written guide on PoE Vault. Do not forget that all of the Righteous Fire information will be updated at pox.net. So right now we have 3.19 RF changes part one. Uh, I'm not, I don't think I'm going to link part two. I don't know. Maybe I will. It's just part two is not really a big deal. Uh, so I don't really think it's that, you know, that, yeah. Uh, and then I'll be changing all of this information. I still have to update all of this. So this is going to be kind of fun. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much about it. So anyway, again, hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. I am very excited to see Everything that happens in 3.19, there's a lot of really cool stuff that was teased. Um, so yeah, that's it. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you guys all tomorrow. Take care, everybody.